Lynn likes to describe the public salon as inter Vancouver introducing it to itself. We learn things we never knew about the city. Did you know that Vancouver is the center of an internationally respected community of mixologists, people skilled in the mixing of cocktails? Our next guest is one of the stars with a surprising depth of understanding of chemistry, science, and people. Her award-winning company in the Okanagan supplies the essential bitters, and she performs her magic at the Uva Wine and Cocktail Barter just up the street. You might have seen her on the front cover of magazines recently. Please welcome Lauren Mote. Thank you very much, everyone, for coming and, well, listening to all the stories we have to tell. It, it seems that the broad theme of, of all of this is about community, and that's pretty cool. So let's get started, shall we? So I've been a bartender for a long time. I've been a bartender for 15 years. I've been a sommelier for 10 years. Um, I've been in the industry for 18 years. I have also uh, gone to university. I've gone to college. I have uh, you know, been an amateur chef. I've owned uh, two catering companies before my partner Jonathan and I opened Kale and Nori Catering. So I've, I've done a lot of stuff. I seem to be unimpressed with status quo. I want something more. And, and that's what led me to bartending in the first place. So cultivating a movement, when I'm talking about the Canadian cocktail convivium. Convivium, I'm talking about the fabric. I'm talking about the scope of something that every bartender belongs to. They all belong to this understanding that hospitality, a well-made cocktail, creativity, innovation, and love is the driving force in what we do every single day behind the bar. With this Canadian cocktail convivium, we are also present with Toronto and Montreal, but Vancouver is the one that is winning the race right now, running against our brothers and sisters from the US uh, that have started the cocktail movement at the end of, or sorry, during the 1800s, and certainly yesterday was the cocktail's birthday. 208, give it a warm round of applause. So what I do is simply as an ambassador to the craft, to the, an ambassador to the movement that really celebrates what we all do and love, and certainly as an, an interest piece in consumption. It is our part of our very survival, love and all of these other things that we need in life. We also need to eat, we need to drink. It doesn't necessarily have to be alcohol, but we prefer it to be. <laughs> but certainly the next point, from trendy to trend setting, it's all about participation. I am a very, very lucky person in the sense that I have worked really, really hard. This whole work-life balance that Dr. Kang is talking about, I have it, but I'm a workaholic. And I mean that in the most positive sense of it. I am completely committed to building a life and building a career, not just for me, but also for the staff that I have, the friends that I have, the colleagues and peers, most of them are here tonight. And cultivating something that makes people very, very excited so you can come into a bar and have that beautiful experience. Classic to contemporary, the first and last word. <laughs> the bottom right slide is really funny because I used to be obsessed with hydrocolloids and used to be obsessed with doing science experiments with uh, food and beverage. And, and certainly we've seen, you know, the best examples of that would be Alinea and El Bulli and lots of other beautiful restaurants in the world. And for me, I thought it would be fun to keep doing this with cocktails. So I did that for the first little while in my career and then took it back to basics. So this is the top middle photo is a photo that was featured in BC Living, which I was honored to, to grace the cover of, but a consumer and lifestyle magazine that focused almost entirely on bartending and five bartenders in particular and what we thought was important in the social fabric of drinking culture. So those five cocktails are very, very simple and certainly we're coming back to basics. Spirited anthropology, sorry, anthropology, I wish, that's kind of part of it anyway. Spirited philanthropy and visionary benefactors. What we mean by that is that philanthropy is, uh, is wealthy information and most oftentimes money donated to a cause. Benefactor are those that are providing the gift for the cause. All of this is not possible. If I were to digress back to my second slide where I have been honored to be featured in magazines and lots of my peers and colleagues have, have found the same, the success is not possible without community. And all of this, it would take me like an, another seven minutes to tell you all the people that are up here. But certainly we've 
We've done programs here, we've done programs abroad, we've done festivals in the city, international festivals, cocktail competitions, bartending contests, we've done um, collaborative dinners with other chefs in the city, collaborative events with other bartenders around the world, and it's pretty incredible because we all know each other. And it's, it's a beautiful part of culture to belong to that in every industry that you're all part of, you know who the other people are. You know what they're all doing across the other side of the country or perhaps in a, different, uh, uh, a different country altogether across the pond. We know everyone and we aspire to impress those people every single day. Sustainable growth. This is pretty cool. This is one thing that we always forget to do is stop and smell the roses. We are always so busy to just keep on going to the next project that we oftentimes forget to stand still and appreciate what we've already achieved. For me, I already shared with you that I went to university. I did a double major in political science and French linguistics. But it causes me to be an incredible communicator. I can communicate with anyone, except in French, because I don't do that anymore. But, <laughs> but the top left represents a, a, a a time period when um, my partner and I were scribbling on cocktail napkins discussing, wouldn't it be amazing if we could finally launch a Canadian cocktail bitters line, finally have it available for retail, finally have something that we can compete with Peychaud bitters, that we can compete with Agostura bitters, and that we can cultivate a brand new line of items that bartenders will be excited to use, because that's when we know that we've accomplished something great, is when other bartenders are using it. We called that picture face bitters. Those were the first four bitters that we created in the Bittered Sling lineup. Uh, down below, we have these little labels that had like <laughs> They were shellacked and we had to hold the labels out the window while we shellacked them because it was really poisonous. And they had tiny little letters on them uh, that we had to keep taking out with tweezers and replacing. Um, the picture to the right is when we started hand drawing the labels, which is pretty awesome. And then we were featured in the Vancouver Magazine gift guide, which was pretty cool. I'm like, wow. So we go from handwritten labels to now we're being featured as a go-to product for the holiday season. And then of course, um, bottom right, was when we were so honored and surprised, completely flabbergasted, punched in the face, that we actually won Producer Supplier of the Year Vancouver Magazine last year. So that was pretty amazing. <laughs> so I'm, I'm gonna go over time by 30 seconds. I'm calling it now, I'm calling it now. Okay, so a doctorate in bartending. Cocktails, yeah, they have something to do with bartending but they really don't. It's about hospitality and it's about community. Every single person listed in a picture on this page is someone that has either influenced me or I've influenced them. And it is the most important thing in what we do is to nurture and develop an environment where people can learn, grow and reach their goals. So there's brand ambassadors up here, there's young bartenders, two distillers at the top. And uh, of course, my learning is on the bottom right corner because quite frankly, I, I live on Sunset Beach and I go to the beach and read about plants. Got to continue learning. Lastly, we have innovation and prosumers, a wise and well-traveled social network. It's no question, Vancouver is an expensive place to live. If you live here, you probably have a little bit of disposable income that you want to go out and spend it on something. You likely travel the world and you come back and you want to see what's innovative and new and what Vancouver's answer is to that. And we have the answer. On the top are the four best bars in the world, the Dead Rabbit in New York, Cannon in Seattle, Nightjar in London, and then finally on the right is the Varnish in LA. But guess what? The bottom four pictures are four really exceptional bars in Vancouver that you couldn't even tell would be anywhere else in the world. Support your local bartenders, because we make great cocktails, and we love all of you, and it's because of you that we're all in business. Thank you.